Welcome back uh, to exercise number three of problem set number four. Here we're taking a closer look at generators and generators makes it possible to construct all elements of a, present, a representation via taking the exponential. i is here the generator and it's defined like this on page 80 of the script and we restrict it to all s which yield the identity element. In part a of Exercise number three, we define a matrix A of T by taking the identity matrix and on the upper right corner we have the parameter T. We have to show that this is a group and yes it is. If you go into the details of matrix multiplication you can see that the sum of two matrices is still in the parameter space T of this representation and the identity element is defined as taking t equal to 0 because then you have the identity matrix and if you wanna see what the inverse is well you just take minus t okay now we wanna see what uh, what is the generator of this group well we just copy from over here this is one, minus 1 over i d by dt of this matrix representation 1 t 0 1 and then you see this is nothing else than uh, a matrix with minus 1 over i in the upper right corner and when validating that this is indeed the generator of the group we have to take the exponential of this generator and when taking the exponential we have to tailor expand it and we have to compute powers of i. So the most important observation right here is that this matrix is nilpotent and we get a zero matrix for all powers greater than one. So this is very easy then to compute the exponential of minus i times the generator times the parameter t because this is nothing else than the identity matrix plus our generator times the parameter t and this is what you expect it to be namely t in the upper right corner and ones on the diagonal and a of t so this was fairly easy so we can go a little go to a little more difficult problem we take a different matrix we take t and 1 being on the diagonal and everything else being 0. By taking the matrix multiplication it's ev even easier than before because we have only only here we have a multiplication we have only diagonal elements uh, the identity element is the one where you take t equal to 1 and the inverse of v of t and here comes the interesting part when looking at that equation the inverse of b of t is 1 over t as the parameter so as a conclusion you can say that t is in the set of all real numbers but 0 because this is of course not defined for t equal to 0 now you can conclude that this group is disconnected it's disconnected because it's not possible to connect those elements b of t with t greater than the 0 with those of where t are, is smaller than 0 with a path lying in the parameter space or in other words you have here matrices with a determinant plus or minus 1 and they can't be connected so we have a disconnected group and therefore we have to be careful constructing the generators but we take a straightforward approach and see what happens so we take minus 1 over i d by dt of our matrix representation where t is equal to 1 because 1 yields the identity element so what is this well this is the matrix where 1 is on the upper uh, left corner and we have a prefactor and we call this j and again an important observation is that j to the n 
is always j. And to the zero, of course, you have the identity. So therefore, um, we can we can compute again the exponential. With uh, we take x because we have to modify this variable. We have to see that in uh, why why the reason for that we see in a moment. So we again we Taylor expand it, and then you have always j times your Taylor uh, Taylor series uh, exponential over here. So you have again j to the nth times x squared over 2 and so on and you recognize here an exponential function and here the identity matrix. So what do you have? You have the identity matrix plus an exponential function where the identity element is left out and every other element is 0. So you have e to the x in the upper left corner of this matrix and you have a 1 on the lower right corner. Now in order to obtain our b of t's we have to choose for t greater than 0 and t smaller than 0 different x's. So we choose for t greater than 0 x being equal to the logarithm of t and for t great, uh, smaller than 0 we have to multiply a minus 1. We have to extract a minus 1 and we get that by taking x being equal to i pi plus the logarithm of t. Here you can see again uh, the parameter space lies therefore in the complex plane and these are two lines which are separated by e to the i pi and they can't be connected so it's a disconnected group. In part c we have to validate that the generator of SO2 is indeed the generator of SO2 and we just have to compute the exponential over here so e to the minus i, I alpha times alpha must yield our rotation. So this applied on f of phi gives us when Taylor expanding n equal to 0 to infinity um, we just write down the definition of the Taylor series over here. Here we insert the generator from above. Now we see. Now we we uh, just regroup these numbers here. This minus i cancels with this minus i. So you have for n equal to zero to infinity, you have the nth derivative of f of phi to phi over n faculty times alpha to the nth power and this is by definition nothing else than f of phi minus alpha. So we've shown that this is indeed our generator and now we can move on to part d where we're given a different group. So we have uh, the stretching of the x-axis so by the parameter t uh, increases the distance between our points x or decreases the distance of our point x. And by taking a closer look at b we see that again we have to define our parameter to be in the set of real numbers but zero. The reason for that is when you're taking x double prime being equal to a times x so a x prime so a b x and this is a new, num new number c we can see the identity is when x prime is equal to x so t being equal to 1 is the identity and x double prime to e is equal to x exactly when t to the minus 1 is 1 over t. Therefore here because of this reason we have to exclude the 0 over here. We can compute the generator again by the definition over here. Now you're more or less used to i times a function f of x is minus 1 over i and now we take the representation given in the exercise sheet we take o t times f of x evaluated at t equal to 1 this is because t equals to 1 t equal to 1 yields the identity now you insert here because this is by definition f of x over t you take the chain rule of this calculation and you arrive at minus 1 over i minus x over t squared 
d by dt of f of x over t at t equal to 1. And now we see that we can shorten this term. This is x over i d by dt f of x by setting t equal to 1. So this is our generator. And we have to again be very careful when we when you write this in our exponential because we have to take again t two different logarithms, two different parameters for our logarithms. One is where uh, we take we take a new variable y being equal to minus the logarithm of t and the, the other branch is where uh, y is equal to minus i times pi minus the logarithm of t. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. I, uh, I hope everything is clear now. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate and send me an email. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.